Python chapter 7. In this chapter, we're going to continue where we left off with lists, and we're going to show some more ways that you can save a lot of data and work with a lot of data in Python. So lists is a great start, but there's lots of other kinds of data that you might want to work with, and lists don't work for everything. So today, let's talk about tables. Sometimes you need to store collections of values. For example, you might want to keep track of all the students in class and their daily attendance. So you see I've only listed three students, but just think of, you know, 20 or 30, lots of students in a class, and I want to keep track of their attendance every day. How can I do this with lists? Well, I can't really have one list for each person because that's mixing the data. Remember, everything is supposed to be related. And here I've got presence and tardies and absences, and I've got names, and they're really not the same. So I can't have a list for each person, and anyways, if I did, that would be a lot of lists. I could go this way. I could have a list for my student, a list for Monday, a list for Tuesday, a list for Wednesday, a list for Thursday, a list for Friday, and just kind of keep them all straight so that all the zeros indexes are in Melissa, and all the ones are Joe's, and all the twos are Sarah, and that would work. That's still a lot of lists to work with. So here's an alternative. An arrangement consisting of rows and columns of values is called a table or matrix. I'm sure that you've seen this kind of thing in your math class. Python doesn't have a data type just for tables, so what we're going to do instead is use a list of lists. So here I've taken the information and I've broken it down to I have one list for the students because that is different data, and then I have another list of lists for the attendance. So here is all the attendance for Melissa the attendance for Joe, and the attendance for Sarah. And you can see that this is a list. So the first element is a list, the second element is a list, and the third element is a list. So I have a list of lists. And everything in this index 0 is for Monday, this index is for Tuesday, this index is for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So it's all organized, and this way instead of having six lists, I really just have two. One for the names, and then one for all the rest of the data that is related. To create a table or to print a table, we're going to use two for loops instead of one. With one loop, we just had, with one uh, list, we just had a column across. And now we're going to have rows and columns. So we're going to have a for loop for the columns and a for loop for the row. And we're going to nest them. So we haven't done this very often, and it can be a little confusing the first time you try it. So I'm going to be careful with the variable names I use, and let's just walk you all the way through it the first time of doing a list of lists, which we will call a table. Let's get started with our first program using tables. You want to go ahead and put your comment block at the top, and we're, we are going to use random numbers to make our program execution go faster. Let's just talk about what's going to happen in main. I still need to have a list. This is going to be a list of lists, but I'm just going to give it one name. For this particular program, we're going to keep track of students and their test scores. So let's just say that you have a whole classroom of students, and they've taken several tests, and you want to show all the data like in a chart or table. So I'm going to call my list students, or let's call it scores. I'm going to use a plural because it's a list. It's not a rule, but it's a good convention and I'm going to declare an empty list. And um, I'm going to also, at this point, ask them how many um, students there are and how many test scores. And I can do this anywhere, but I'm going to use this data in several procedures. So I might as well do it here, and then I can pass it in as a parameter to any procedure that needs it, or any function. So I'm going to ask them for the number of students and the number of scores. Number of students. And how many scores, how many test scores did they take? So I can use this information to fill my table and also to print. So let's just kind of, let's come up here and let's actually do a fill table. And I need, as my parameters, 
the scores, num students, and num scores. So all the information I have down below. Now I'm going to have um, two loops, and I'm going to use this as one of my ranges, and this is my other. When you think about your students, the students are in my rows, okay? and my scores are going to be my columns. So I'm going to use num students when I'm doing rows, and I'm going to use num scores when I'm doing columns. My outside loop is going to be my rows, and my inside loop that's nested is going to be my scores and my columns. Okay, now we have to do a little bit of a trick when we do this because we do have a list of lists. Right now I have one list and I need to fill it. Each element is going to be a list on its own. So as I am filling this table, I'm going to create like a temporary list that I'm going to then append to my scores. Now I can't do any kind of shortcut. Say I'm going to actually need to access each element. So I'm going to do, instead of using I and J or just a, a number, a letter, I'm going to use R for rows and C for columns. So that kind of helps out a little bit visually, hopefully. So I'm going to say for R or rows in num students. Remember, students are rows. Now, what I need to do is create like this temporary list that's going to be for the first element. And then I append it. So I'm going to actually create a new, a new list. I'm just going to call it temp right now because that's what it is. I'm not actually going to keep this list once I append it. So I'm going to have my, my empty list. Okay. Now I'm going to start my second loop, which is going to be my columns or all my scores. So I'm going to say C for columns for C in, oh, I didn't do this quite right. I need range. Okay. And then same thing down here. So it's going to be C in range. And now I'm going to use num scores. And I'm just going to generate a random number for my test score. And I'm just going to use 1 to 10. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. We just want to work with tables here, not have actual real data. Once I have this number, I'm going to append it to my temporary list. So temp.append. And I'm going to do this for how many scores. So if they had five test scores, I will get five random numbers appended each time. So my temp is filled with my five scores for one student. Now that I have this, I'm ready after this for loop to append my temporary to my scores. It's going to be the first element. So I'm going to unindent. So I'm not in the, for, the, the second for loop. I'm still in the first one. And I'm going to take my scores and append temp. So I'm appending a list as my first element. Okay. So that's pretty slick. Then what's going to happen, I'm going to come up here to my second element or index 1. I'm going to start my temp all over again. So I recreate it empty. Then I'm going to fill it from 0 to however many test scores for the second person. And then I append it as the second element. Then I'm going to repeat this process for however many students I have. So I'm going to do a new temp list for every student, for every row. This is going to give me my list of lists. When I print it, I'm going to do something pretty similar. So let's go ahead and do a print table. And I'm going to need the same information. And I'm once again going to use two for loops. Now right now I'm not changing anything in my list, so I can use the shortcut. Or I can also do it the long way. And I'm going to kind of show you both. I'm going to start with the shortcut, because if you can use it, it saves you a little bit of time. So remember how we did a four item in my list? So I have four item in scores. But each item is a list. So I'm going to break it down with my second for loop for thing in item. This is kind of just a slick little trick there. My item, you know, for each uh, uh, element in scores, but each element item is a list itself, so I'm just going to break down like this. And then I'm going to print my thing 
And I'm going to put my comma there so it stays on one line. And then after this middle for loop, the inside for loop, I want to print. So I go to the next line before I start the next row. And then, of course, I want to end with the print. So hopefully, if everything is, is all correct here, I will get a filled table and I will get a printed table. So let's go ahead and call these two functions. And of course I have the call name. And I forgot to do my dash, so there we go. Let's just start off with three students and five test scores. Okay, so there you see the first five test scores for the first person, five test scores for the next person, and five test scores for the next person. So it definitely did work. Now this isn't very user-friendly printout because everything's all kind of squished together. So we can use some of our tabbing that we learned recently for lists. I'm going to come in here and before I print the thing, I want to do a tab. So I'm going to use quotation marks, a backslash T, and that's going to print my tab, and then plus, and I have to change my thing to a string. And this will just you know, spread it out a little bit make it look more like a table. So let's try this. Let's try three students and five test scores again. There we go. Nice neat little table. So you can run this several times with different numbers. Maybe I try five students and three test scores. You can see the difference of how many rows and how many columns. So the first question when it says how many students, this is going to ask you basically how many rows. And I'll say nine. And the second question is going to ask you how many columns. And let's say four. There we go. So you have just created a table or a list of lists. You know how to fill it. You have to do some little trick things like creating temporary lists and appending and then appending the list to the list. And we have a way of printing our table. Now if you want to get a little bit fancier, I can create that second list that's going to keep track of my student name that to go along with the scores. So I can create a second list, and I'm going to call it students. And I'm going to basically fill it and print it at the same time. So I'm going to have another parameter. I'm just going to stick it in kind of in the middle. So I'm going to do my list score. So I have scores. I'm going to have students for both places. Now, when I am getting my rows, so each student, there's going to be one student per row. So I need, don't need it in this inside loop with the columns. I just need to do it one time with my rows. This list students is going to be just a list. So right here, while I'm going inside my first, my outside loop, I'm going to ask for the student name. Now this is a string, so I'm just going to say name equals, and then input student name okay. and then I'm going to append this to students so students and then my index is R because it's which row actually I can just append and it will go to R so students dot append name so this is going to fill my students with the name for the same row as all the test scores so it's going to ask for the name and then it's going to ask for the test well it's going to generate um, random test scores now when I go to print it, I want to print the name before I print the test score. So I'm going to do this right here. Now I can't print, now that I've got two lists going on, I can't really do the cheat way because this is only for scores. Well, how do I can combine the name with the scores? I'm going to actually have to use the index at this point. So we're going to go back to R's and C's and ranges. So instead of item and scores, let's do for R in range. And remember that the column in the row is always num students. And then here I'm going to do C for column. 
and it's always range. And here for me, it is num scores. Okay. The first thing I want to do is print the person's name. So I'm going to access the element at R. So I have students at R. And what I want to do with this is print it. So I'm going to say print students R. And I want to keep it on the same line. So I'm going to put my little comma there. Then I'm going to print all the test scores. So I'm still going to have print. I'm still going to use my tab. But instead of thing, now I have to go to my scores list. And I have to print what's at R and C. So I'm going to do my square brackets for R. And then right away with nothing in between, square brackets for C. So I've got two index elements to list here. Okay, still get me a comma, everything else, but I just have to access and say which row, which column. Okay, now hopefully if there's no errors, we're going to start with just small, so I don't want to type a lot of names, so we'll just say three students, and we'll say five test scores. The first name will be Ann, then we'll have Bob, and then we'll have Carl. And so you see their names and their test scores. So this looks very much like what we saw in the presentation earlier for attendance. Looks, this looks very similar. You can run this several times and test it. Now one more thing we can do is maybe we want to put a heading across the top of what these numbers mean. So that'll just be one more thing to add to it. So before I start in here, or actually I could do it kind of at the same time. I want to just do a little dash is where the name is, and then I'm going to say like T1 for test 1, T2, T3, T4. And I can use R as my index here. So I'm going to start by just printing the little dashes. And then I'm going to do my tab, and everything else is going to work out just fine. Now I want to print each of the test scores. I'm going to use a, a quick loop here for, um, and I'm going to do columns. So C in range num scores, and I'm going to print C, which is starting. Actually, I want to start it at. Um, I started at zero, but I don't want to print zero. I want to print one. So we'll just do it kind of a little tricky like this. I'm going to print, and I'm going to put like a T for test score. And then right after that, I want to print the number. So I'm going to do my plus and change it to a string. And C is my index, but I want to do plus one. So even though it's index zero, I want it to show one. That'll be a little bit more user friendly. Okay, and then if I want to do a tab in front of this, I'll actually do my backslash T for tab, and then it will print the actual T. Okay, so let's try this. Let's do three students again, five test scores. We'll have Ann, Bob, Carl. Okay, now everything's working pretty good, except I forgot to do another print. So after I have all the headings here, need to end with a print so it goes to a new line. Let's try it one more time. Three students, five test scores, and Bob and Carl. Okay, so I have a nice little table here. I've got headings across the top. I've got the students down here. I did all this with two lists. And I was just kind of creative on how I can do my headings and actually get them numbered. So I invite you to kind of play around with this, study what the code is doing, maybe try it again on your own. You've seen me do it. Try doing some of it on your own. And then for the next challenge, can you get an average of all these elements? So can I find out if I added them all together, what's the total? And then, of course, how many elements do I have? What's the average? 
So I'm going to challenge you to create another procedure, another function, for finding the average of all the elements and then printing it out. Now, if you've already worked out how to find the average, it might look something like this. Let's just run it again. And let's try four students and um, six test scores. Uh, and Bob, Carl, um, Dan. And the everything looks great there. Here's my total. Here's my average. I've got my function defined over here. I needed the scores, the number of students, and the number of scores. Remember to start uh, initialize your total to zero before you try and accumulate it. And also remember, how do I get the number of total number of um, elements? Well, I can't add them as I go, so I can have a counter in here. But I do have a pretty good idea because I've got number of students and I've got number of scores. If I multiply them together, I've got my total number. So that's my count, and I'm going to use two for loops to get my, you know, add up all my elements together. So once I have my total and I multiply these to get my count, I can divide them to get the average. So, so finding your average isn't going to be that difficult. Remember to initialize your total, remember to multiply to get your count, divide, and then just remember you have a loop within a loop to access each element of your scores and accumulate your total with that element. Now for an additional challenge, can you figure out how to get um, the average of each column? Get an average here, 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 here. So I would, here I'd have six averages. Or do you know, how, can you figure out how to get an average of each row? So those could be additional functions. Kind of think about it. See if you can work it out. And uh, We'll uh, work on this again on the next lesson.